Okay. Ah. Oh. Okay. Yes, guys, what is going on? And welcome back to another video. Today's video is actually slightly different uh, because we're not actually shooting, it's a sit down video. Uh, and this is actually the first time I would have done one of these videos here on this YouTube channel. So I'm excited for that. I'm excited to show you exactly what I carry around with me in my camera bag uh, because it varies from trip to trip or occasion to occasion. So I'm looking forward to giving you guys a good insight. So first of all, let's talk about camera bags. Now, when I was first starting in photography, I really, it took me a while to find a solid camera bag that I really enjoyed, that I thought was very practical and useful. So that brings me to this bag. So this is mainly my travel photography bag, uh, whether that be somewhere within the UK or going further abroad. This thing is by far the most perfect bag uh, specifically for me, I love it so much. I know a lot of other photographers do. This is the Pro Tactic 450 AW2. Uh, I think I said that right. It's a bit of a mouthful, but uh, this bag is absolutely insane. Uh, I don't even know where to begin. It's extremely durable. I know that all my gear is gonna be very much protected inside of this thing. You've got this hard shell on the top here. Uh, so typically what you do is you uh, it unzips. So it unzips from the back like like this opens up uh, and then in here you can keep so this is where I keep things like filters ND filters uh, polarizers and stuff like that maybe some wires or SD cards and then you have a laptop sleeve so my laptop which is just behind me there will fit perfectly inside there and then as you can see my layout looks something like this so it fits all of my lenses multiple drones obviously my laptop all my wires you've got a nice pocket at the top here and yeah, it's just absolutely an incredible bag. You'd honestly be so shocked at how much stuff that I can get inside this thing. One thing I will say, which is another really good point, is that at the bottom of the bag, if you take out this thing here, this is essentially a raincoat for your bag. So let's say you're out uh, doing a shoot and all of a sudden it starts to pour it down and you're a little bit worried about uh, your gear getting wet. Basically, you can pull this over i'm kind of struggling to do this here but yeah you pull this over and then all of a sudden your camera bag now has a raincoat on it so i absolutely love that feature uh so yeah that is my number one bag for travel uh and all things where i need to bring lots of gear now i'll go into my street photography bag the bag that i use when i'm uh, going around London or in a, in a city, something that I don't want to carry too much gear with me and something that I don't want to look too much like a camera bag. So this uh, this bag here, so this is a bag by Manfrotto. It's in their street photography or their street series. It's uh, one of their slim backpacks. It's in like a cool green color. And just by looking at it, you wouldn't think, ah, that might be a camera bag. So that's immediately one thing that I like about it. The bag itself is super light. Uh, so that really helps. So if you undo the back here, you've got uh, a little section here for all your gear. So I usually have my camera body, maybe two lenses or a lens and a drone. Then if you come to the top, that is just extra storage. You've even got a laptop sleeve in there uh, and you've got additional pockets in there where you can keep SD cards and filters, etc., etc. Now, one thing that I always carry with me in camera bags, I didn't show it in that one, but I'm going to highlight it now. And that is a microfiber cloth you want to get one of the thicker ones uh, because they're a lot better they're a lot better at wiping off things like rain droplets and stuff like that it doesn't just like smudge them all around it absorbs them and then just gets rid of them uh, so this is a must and i always always find myself using these uh, because you don't want to get to a location do loads of shooting and then a few hours later when you come to the edit you realize that your lens was all smudged or it had rain droplets on it so this is a perfect way of just uh, getting rid of all those problems I know I've been speaking about camera bags for a while, so I'm going to move on to gear. So first of all, cameras. Let's talk cameras. So a lot of you actually ask me this. It's probably the one of the most commonly asked questions I get. What camera do I use? What camera would I recommend? So I'm using the Sony a7 III. Uh, some of you are often surprised by that, but this has been my go-to camera for the past three years now, I think. Uh, yeah, just three, three years, I think. I've had it for so long and I haven't felt the need to upgrade purely because it literally does everything I need. The photo quality is outstanding. The night photo capabilities are also amazing. And also the video capabilities 
Uh, also perfect, it shoots in 4K at 24 frames a second, uh, and you can also shoot in 1080p at 120 frames. So it is really, it's a perfect all-in-one camera. Uh, as, and as I said, I haven't felt the need to upgrade. I did actually get my hands on the new Sony a7R5 uh, a few months ago, and seeing that made me really wanna upgrade. Um, but I mean, cause like this screen, I really wish that sometimes it folded out, especially when I'm shooting portrait, I kind of have to be level with the thing in order to see my shot. Whereas if I was shooting really low, for example, it'd be great if I could fold out a screen and just shoot like that. So that is one thing that I am missing. So I will potentially upgrade, but I'm wanting to hold out for the Sony a7 V um, because I know that camera is just going to be insane. So if I can keep my a7 III till then, it keeps working because I've put this thing through a lot. Uh, and it's still going strong. So this is a top, top camera. Now, in terms of lenses, uh, this is the first lens we're gonna talk about, and this is actually one of the most recently purchased lenses that I got my hands on. This is the 12 to 24 G Master F 2.8 from Sony. This thing is an absolute beast. I haven't really got the chance to use it as much as I'd like, just because I haven't been shooting too much London stuff. Uh, but I can't wait to go out and properly shoot this thing. 12 mil is absolutely insane, and the image quality is super duper sharp. Uh, I was actually out in LA recently, and I did uh, manage to capture a couple of shots on it with it, um, but I haven't really been able to push it to its full potential. First lens is a 12 to 24 mil. Next, we have the 16 to 35 f 2.8 G Master, again from Sony. I absolutely love the G Master lenses, but with this lens, this was actually my first ever Sony lens. I got this about three or four years ago now. It's the perfect lens for vlogging and I've used it in so many situations. Uh, you really can't fault this lens and a lot of photographers will definitely have a 16 to 35 mil in their bag. Uh, it gives you the potential of having a super nice wide angle shot, whether you're in the city, but it also gives you the opportunity to punch into 35 mil. Uh, maybe if you're doing some portraits or other things like that. As I said, it was one of my first lenses that I got uh, and it's lasted me all the way till now and beyond. So this next lens, it's also one of the ones that I recently picked up. This is the tw uh, blah, blah. this is the 24 to 70 mil f 2.8 Mark II from Sony. Uh, and funnily enough, this is the first 24 to 70 that I've actually owned. Uh, and I don't know why it's taken me so long to get my hands on a 24 to 70. I just didn't really think that I needed one uh, until uh, I started shooting with it recently, and I was like completely blown away. This gives you the perfect choice of uh, shooting wide or zooming in. So all in one lens, especially when you're traveling and stuff like that, you don't want to carry too much stuff. 24 to 70 is uh, it's a must have, and I don't know why I didn't have it. Okay, so that pretty much, oh no, wait, I forgot a lens. How did I forget this? I don't know how, I just looked to the side and I saw this lens staring at me. Why haven't I talked about it yet? So this is the 70 to 200 F 2.8. Mark II from Sony. I have the Mark I version, but I recently upgraded to the Mark II. And oh my God, the difference is absolutely wild, specifically in terms of the weight. This thing literally weighs nothing compared to the original version. The autofocus is super duper quick. Uh, and this thing is absolutely insane. It's become one of my favorite lenses, especially when going to countries like Iceland or places that um, you'd really want to get the scale of your environment and mix that with like people if that makes sense, so like perspective, this is a great lens for that. It's also really nice for automotive photography. I love getting that compression. The compression is absolutely insane. Uh, and I just love shooting on this lens. It's definitely one of my favorite lenses and it absolutely always goes in my camera bag wherever I go, um, especially when traveling. All right, so let's talk prime lenses. Now, prime lenses are some of my favorite lenses to shoot with, especially when doing things like street photography. A lot of you guys who follow me here on YouTube will know that I love shooting on the 85 mil. So this is the 85 millimeter F 1.4 from Sigma. This is one of my all time favorite lenses. I had the V1 version and it was probably double the size, just as good, but I upgraded to the Mark II. And this thing is so small, super light, and it's just amazing to chuck in your bag so so powerful i just can't express how cinematic some of the shots you can get with this lens are uh, it's absolutely insane so the 85 mil was definitely one of my favorite prime lenses in fact it is my favorite prime lens uh, and the other prime lens that i have is the one that i'm using to record this video and that is the 35 mil f 1.4 from sigma that was actually my very first lens that i bought on a sony camera prime lenses 
absolutely amazing. All right, so I wanna move on to talking about drones now because drones are some of my favorite things to use. Uh, and I recently upgraded to the DJI Mini 3 Pro. This is by far my favorite ever drone to have ever come out of their line. It's literally the perfect drone to have with you, especially when traveling, something that you just wanna throw in your bag. It takes up little space at all. This thing is absolutely insane. The wind resistance is also surprisingly very good. You'd think if you put this thing up in the air and it's very strong winds, it's just gonna blow away, which I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I am very worried about, uh, but I haven't had to be worried so far with this. And also the vertical mode is an absolute game changer especially when uh, posting to social media. And also this is the, the controller with the screen built in, so you no longer have to put your phone in it. Uh, and I'm not gonna lie, if you're torn between either getting the original controller where you put your phone in or the one with the screen, I know it's a little bit more expensive by getting the one with the screen, uh, but I do not regret my choice at all. The quality on this thing is absolutely amazing. It makes flying the drone a much nicer experience. And it's also nicer just to have your phone as well, not connected, you don't have to worry about calls coming through or any other distractions. So having the screen uh, inbuilt to the controller is a must. Uh, and yeah, this is my favorite drone so far. Now let's talk FPV gear. Now it's taken me a while to sort of fully fine tune the exact FPV gear that I now use, uh, but I think I finally got to that stage. So. These are the FPV goggles that I have. These are the DJI, um, the DJI digital goggles. These are the version one ones. I know they have two now. I also have the Tango 2 Pro controller. Uh, one thing I love about this is the fact that the joysticks actually fold. It makes it very, very good for traveling because I can have the reassurance that the joysticks aren't gonna snap off and I'm not gonna open my bag to a broken controller and not being able to use my drone. Now, in terms of drones, I actually recently got my hands on this one. Uh, this is the Get RC Cinelog 25. Uh, and I'm actually using a, a naked GoPro. This basically goes on here and this whole setup is less than 250 grams. I haven't really been able to fly this properly yet, uh, but once I get up and going with this, I look forward to showing you guys exactly what I get up to. But yeah, in terms of FPV, this is my current setup uh, and yeah. Uh, right, okay, so now let's talk about the final drone. This thing is the DJI Mavic Pro 1. This is their original, very first drone, uh, and the only reason why I have it now uh, is purely because of my light painting stuff. So a lot of you have seen my light painting over on my Instagram, uh, and this is the drone that I use to do it. It's not the most reliable drone, I won't lie. It often sort of just does its own thing and floats around and it does give me a lot of anxiety, but it yields insane results uh, because I can use these things here. So these are clamps which go on the side of the drone uh, and I can attach the little loom cubes to the side which are basically really bright lights. Uh, and I can create some really cool long exposures up in the sky by flying the drone in really cool patterns. Uh, and I, I did post a video about this a couple of videos ago, so if you're interested about drone light painting, then definitely go and check that out. All right, so I now wanna talk about action cameras or smaller little cameras. So in terms of GoPros, I use the GoPro Hero 10. Uh, I use a lot of this for FPV, uh, and I also use it for my POV videos, my POV street photography videos. Basically, it just sits here on my chest. I have like a little a chest mount that goes over and the GoPro just sits there on my chest. A lot of you guys ask me how I record those videos. Now, the other little camera that I have here, this is the Insta360 One X2, I believe it is. Uh, I've had this thing for a few years now and whenever I get this thing out, I just literally, I'm very excited about the stuff that I can create. It's such a cool little small camera uh, and I love using it. Uh, I haven't really pushed it enough, but this thing is, like the way it works is absolutely insane. I have a, like a, a really cool pole that it sticks on and I can literally just point it in any direction and it doesn't matter which way this camera is facing, it literally picks up everything. Uh, so you can be very assured that you're not gonna miss a shot when you use a 360 camera. So now we're gonna talk about tripods. Uh, I frequently get asked about what tripod I, I use, what tripod I recommend. Uh, and to be honest with you, it's taken me a while to sort of get to a stage where I've used enough tripods now to understand which tripods I would recommend and what ones I don't recommend. Um, so two of the tripods that I mainly use are the Manfrotto, what are they called? The Manfrotto B3 series. So the one that's currently recording this video is basically this one, but it's, uh, a, it's an aluminium one, uh, whereas this is a carbon fiber one. I recently got my hands on this and this thing is so nice and light. It looks beautiful. This is the B, the Manfrotto B3 Advanced uh, in carbon fiber. It's so nice. 
uh, and I use it especially when traveling so I can just chuck it on the side of my bag. It basically weighs nothing. Uh, and yeah, it's just absolutely amazing. So the next thing I wanna talk about is filters. Here I have a whole bunch of filters that I'm gonna quickly rattle through. So first of all, ND filters. I don't really find myself using ND filters too much because I don't shoot too much video. Uh, but when I do, this is my go-to ND filter. This is the two to five stop uh, Polar Pro X Peter McKinnon Mist Edition 2. Uh, it's a really, really cool uh, ND filter. The way it works is basically you, you unscrew this part here and then you screw this part onto your camera and then you peel off this. That way you literally never have to touch the glass and you never have to worry about there being fingerprints. I also have the Polar Pro uh, polarizer filter. So this thing is amazing or oh, it's essential actually for car photography. So this just screws on the front of your lens uh, and basically it cuts out all glare and reflections. One little tip that I do wanna say uh, is I know filters are very expensive. So if you have lenses that have got different thread sizes, i.e. you've got one that's 67, 62, whatever it is, 87, 82, uh, it can be, you don't wanna buy a filter for each individual size. So one thing that I do is I buy a filter for my biggest lens. So let's say my biggest lens has a uh, diameter of 82 millimeters. I'm gonna go out and buy an ND filter which fits 82 mil. Uh, and then what I have here, these things are called step rings. Basically you'd screw this onto the smaller lens and then you'd screw the ND filter onto the bigger part of this, and that way you can use bigger filters for smaller lenses, and that way you don't have to buy so many filters and spend so much money. All right, so I wanna talk about some other little accessories that I always carry with me whenever I'm traveling specifically. Uh, so this is a mini Manfrotto tripod. I picked this thing up a few years ago, uh, and it always comes with me whenever I'm traveling. I use it for things like vlogging, but it's also very good for whenever, let's say you're going into a building that doesn't really allow tripods, you're going up to a viewing deck at night, you can't bring a tripod. Uh, this thing can sort of sneak into your bag. It's very small, it doesn't really look too obvious, uh, and you can just pop that out put your camera on it and get a really nice stable shot. Similarly, I typically bring a phone mount with me. Uh, let's say you're traveling alone and for example, you wanna record, I don't know, an Instagram reel. Having a phone mount and just screw onto your normal tripod uh, is very good. It just goes sideways like this. You can just lock your phone in it however you want. Uh, and having one of these is pretty cool. Now, in terms of audio, uh, what do I use for audio? So this is the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. I think it is. Uh, I've had this thing for a couple years now and to be honest with you, this is one of the best uh, mics for vlogging. This is a, a pretty faultless mic in terms of the quality. And I also have uh, these mics here. I'm currently recording this video on them here. Uh, these are the these are the Joby Wavo uh, Air mics. They're basically really cool mics. This one came in a pack of two, so let's say I was recording myself and one other person. We could each have one of these packs uh, and the audio records straight into the camera. They're absolutely insane mics and I love using them. They just have that really nice, professional, high quality audio. Okay, so I wanna quickly touch on lighting so and light bars. So these are the Nanlite Pava Tubes. I use the Pava Tubes quite a lot. As you can see, we've got this blue and orange light over here that is coming from these Nanlites. Uh, these Nanlites are so nice and small. They're just amazing just to chuck in your camera bag. Whenever I'm going out, it doesn't matter where I'm going to London or whether I'm traveling, I will always chuck one or two of these Nanlites in my bag. You just never know when you're gonna need some good lighting. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up what is in my camera bag 2023. Uh, I really hope that you guys did find this insightful or useful in some way. Uh, and if you did, please feel free to drop a thumbs up on the video. I'd really appreciate that. And if this is the first time that you're seeing me on your screen uh, and you think you're going to find these types of videos useful, uh, check out some of the other videos on my channel and feel free to subscribe. But I think I'll leave things there and uh, I look forward to catching you guys in the next video. Peace.